It was 1975 when Love Will Keep Us Together climbed to number one and turned the Captain and Tennille into stars. Look in my heart and let love keep us together. Tony Tennille first met her husband, Daryl Dragon, in 1971 when she hired him to play keyboard in a musical she had written. A year later, they moved in together. They started out playing local clubs and singing backup for other artists, including the Beach Boys and Elton John. Then, with only 250 bucks of their own money, they recorded a song Tony had written. I never wanted, I never wanted to touch you. The Way I Want to Touch You became a hit on the West Coast and led to a record deal. Over the next five years, they had two albums turn platinum and five albums turn gold. Their success in the music industry led to a television variety series built around Tony's girl next door image and Daryl's shyness. No, I, I had $8,000 worth of equipment and no personality. Honey, you got a nice personality, sweetheart. It's just, it, it's just a little hard to, to, to notice it sometimes. The show lasted just over a season, and the captain and Tennille didn't have another number one hit until 1979. In 1980, Tony went solo hosting her own talk show. And I have experienced entirely different things in our growing up because I was always too tall and I was always diminutive in stature. Oh, you must have been a beautiful baby. Oh, baby. In 1984, Tony embarked on a solo career singing standards. She is currently on stage in Hollywood performing in the musical Stardust. Tomorrow is another day. Don't break my heart. While Tony Tennille has enjoyed success as a solo artist, our Sandy Newton found out it is love that has kept the Captain and Tennille together. Is it true that Captain and Tennille are finally getting back together? I told Daryl at the very beginning when we first started working together that when we don't have hits anymore that I was ready to retire it and let pop music move on because, you know, if we couldn't be current, I just didn't want to do it. So we kind of stopped for quite a few years. And um, finally, a, a, a friend convinced us to come out and do a special benefit uh, and get the old band together and do it just for the heck of it or to help raise some money. And we did it, and the response from the audience was incredible, just really incredible. It's like they were so thrilled to hear Love Will Keep Us Together and mm -hmm. Muskrat Love and Do That <laughs> To Me One More Time and all those songs. Mm -hmm. um, and I sort of had to rethink. I had to rethink my feelings on it because... Uh, it is valid music that's become a part of people's lives, a part mm -hmm. of their memories. Uh, a lot of people fell in love to love will keep us together. It seems funny, but a lot of people assume that just because Captain and Tennille broke up the act, that in real life you got a divorce. When I teed off at the Dinah Shore Pro-Am this year, I just felt like I had to turn around and say, Daryl and I are still <laughs> together, and there was this huge applause, and everybody started, oh, yay, and I, I just, I don't know. For years, ever since I've been doing my own thing uh, mm -hmm. solo, uh, we've we've heard from everybody. Oh, you're we heard you're here. You're divorced, but I wonder why that is. I don't know. I guess they just assume that all marriages in Hollywood fall apart eventually. But we don't live in Hollywood, so I guess ours. Because <laughs> you've been together now 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Married 17 years. Mm -hmm. What do you think the secret is? Um, we like each other yeah. a lot. Um, he still makes me laugh. He made me laugh the first time I heard him play. And I thought, this is great. This is a guy who doesn't take it too seriously. Um, he's um, a very um, spiritual man. He has high principles. Um, he's just a neat guy to be around, and he thinks I'm great. <laughs> and he encourages me to do and try anything I want, uh, do anything I think I can do. And it's pretty nice to have a partner like that. And no children? No children, no. We never had children, just dogs. <laughs> we had those bulldogs for all those many years, and then we moved up to the lake. Um, bulldogs can't hike, mm. so we got dogs that could just go out on the trail with us and ski with us and do things like that. Was that something you both decided just didn't fit into your, your career mode or your lifestyle, well, children? Well, no. We, we had some medical problems in the family history, and we made the decision that it would probably be better not to, not to have children to pass them on. You know, it was a chance. We were taking a chance if we did. And really, if we had had children, I wouldn't be here today. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be home. Mm -hmm. I'd be a mom, and that would be it. Because I, I have a hard enough time just leaving my dogs. So it, it, I, I, I couldn't, it would be difficult for me to combine the two. 
I read actually that you said if you even had to make a, a choice between a career and Daryl, that Daryl would win hands oh, yeah. down. Oh, yeah. I, there, I would never have to make that choice because he would never ask me to. Now, is there a difference with being raised in the South, do you think? I think Southern women are, are raised, and this is not necessarily good today, but they're raised in the art of flirting mm -hmm. and pleasing a man. And, um, you know, we want to be very independent today, but uh, there's also a warmth and a reaching out uh, that you get from Southern people in general. It's always a, come on over to our house and y'all come, mm -hmm. as we say. Um, and I think that that's what attracts men to a Southern woman is that warmth and that kind of a flirtatious little way that they have. It's interesting to me that my husband, who was born and raised in Studio City and lived in Malibu, so he's a native Californian, told me that he always knew he'd marry a Southern belle. And I don't know how he knew that because he didn't know one, I guess, till he <laughs> met me. I read, too, that you said you were the perfect mate for him because you can do all the talking because he's kind of quiet, is he? Or No. No, he really isn't. He, he's not real comfortable speaking in front of a lot of people. Um, although he loves being on stage and he loves playing and he loves it when people go crazy and give him standing ovations in the middle of the show, <laughs> which they do. Uh, he's a ham. But um, I think it's from the days of the television show when we had the Captain and Tennille show. And he had never been on television in his life. He'd never done any talking to audiences. He was extremely uncomfortable. And I think that even made him more uncomfortable through the time that we were on television. So it's just easier. He just lets me, <laughs> lets me talk. <laughs> was it a surprise when ABC approached you and said, and now we want you to do a television show? Well, yes, it was. I enjoyed doing the show, but I didn't like what happened to to my life in that there was no privacy anymore. And it was hard. I'll never forget the first, uh, the first time that we took a vacation, a hiatus from the show. And we decided, well, where can we go that we won't be recognized? And we thought, well, let's go to Canada. So we decided to go to Lake Louise. And when we got there, we didn't realize that the show was as popular in Canada as it was in the United States. They'd neglected to tell us that. And we absolutely were mobbed. We, we couldn't go anywhere, do anything. People were waiting right outside our door, slipping notes under the door, knocking on it. It was like we were the Beatles or something. It was very uncomfortable. And I ended up in, in the room feeling like I was in a, in a prison, in tears. You know, Daryl and I left L.A. eight or nine years ago to move up to northern Nevada so we could just lead kind of a normal life. Do you have any regrets about moving up to Nevada? None. <laughs> I don't regret it for a second. Um, my career might have been much further along if I'd stayed in Los Angeles, but um, I love the life I have. It's a very normal, natural life. Uh, I, I have friends who do other things than show business. They're, they're just regular people. Um, I go to the supermarket. I go to the dry cleaners. I do all the things that regular people do, and yet I can get on a plane and fly to Pittsburgh and sing with one of the great symphony orchestras in the world. So I think I have the best of both worlds.